What are we starting with? Are we review this week? Are we review? No, Luke was silent. I thought Luke was going to say something, but no, he, he didn't. Does. No, it's not a we review. A Spotify update. It's not a Spotify update. A YouTube comment. That is correct. Oh, it is yeah. a YouTube. Why does he always get it right? Do you just wait for him to say something and go, "Yep, yeah, that's what we're doing." <laughs> I'm gonna be honest. I forgot to get a YouTube comment. I was stalling, and I found one now. <laughs> no, Luke was right from the start. <laughs> so this is a comment that says, uh, "It's from the Ginger Kid." It says, "Left-handed and a ginger." Had a teacher in middle school who hated me because she said those two things together meant I was a child of the devil. What? Oh, your right? teacher said that. It's oh. an awful thing for a teacher to say, isn't it? You're not a child you know, of the devil, I promise you. To to sort of give back to the community, to make you feel better, you now are the YouTube comment of the week or month. One time my health my health teacher said gay people make bad decisions. <laughs> <laughs> um and I left that school the next year. <laughs> I mean Was that a good decision or a bad decision? That was a really good decision. So <laughs> she well, was wrong. Well done. <laughs> And before we start, I do have a question for everyone listening. Get to the YouTube comments and answer this question. If you had a robot, what would you call your robot? Alan. Okay, let's start the show. No, hey, you're not answering the question. Let's start the show. Okay. <laughs> let's start the show. Hello and welcome to the Sci Guys, the show where we talk about the crazy, weird, and wonderful stories from the science world. I'm Corey, and as always, I'm joined by my coasts, Coasts Jam and Co- Luke Cutler. I'm your lo- lo- local neighborhood coast. This week, we're talking about artificial intelligence. Oh. oh. Big topic. Yeah. yeah. So you guys, uh, you guys know what robots are, right? Have you guys heard of robots? What are yes. what, what is a robot? Well, what is a robot? That's a good question. Uh, is it, it some, a piece, some piece of machine that, that does a yeah. task that we decide. automates a task? Yeah. So uh, a robot is any automatically operated machine that replaces human effort, though it may not resemble human beings in appearance or perform functions in a human-like manner. That is from Britannica. Oh, so, okay. It's a I robot. Mean an iPhone is a robot. But it, it doesn't replace... Well... It replaces a lot like of tasks. I feel like it's got to mechanically replace human effort, right? Okay. I think that's I think that's something that seems to be missing from that. Because then, by that logic, any any artificial intelligence system would be a robot. You're... Yeah. Um, what they call the self-checkout helper things. They would mm. be robots. That's a know? robot. Yeah, it is. But is it a robot? Yes. Yeah. It's not how we imagine mm. a robot, because we imagine a robot being like a human-like thing. It doesn't have oh, to wait, be. Oh, wait, hold on. No, because no. it doesn't replace the scanning. It just scans. We yeah, do it the is scanning. Not, it's not automatically operated. Oh. Well, yeah. yeah. I feel right. like we were so tripped to be, up by... <laughs> it has to do everything itself, basically. I see. Well, yeah, it's got, it's got, to, it's got to like operate autonomously. right? Without so, human assistance. Yeah, you just kind of set it going, and it does its whole thing. You might have to fix it every now and again. Yeah. But you've got to fix people too. That's why we have hospitals. That's true. We are robots. Well, in a sense, we are robots. We need occasional you know? fixing. And if if the film from the 2000s, Robots, taught me anything, it is that we are all robots. You know, you guys seen that film? That's what no? I took from no. that film, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. That and... um, That great musical number at the end. That was great as well. Yeah, yeah. Also, the guy that looked like Brian Rose, right? The the evil robot. If someone looks like that, oh, yeah. then don't trust him. Yeah, so glad he's not our mayor. So those aren't the robots I'm going to be talking about today. Have you guys heard of Sophia? I have a friend called Sophia. Does that count? I have heard of Sophia, but I have forgotten all information oh, about it. It's the bold robot lady. <gasps> yes, it is. It is. <laughs> and she speaks to people. <laughs> yes, she does. That is that is a very astute observation. Do you know what? I forgot that we were doing this remotely. I have a picture on my screen that I was like, ah, yes, I will show this picture to you guys when <laughs> when the time comes. I will do that. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to try and send this picture to you through the magic of the internet. Yeah, Ooh. Sophia is kind of... So for those listening who who, you know, can't see or those who are watching and can't see, Essentially, think of Ex Machina. Think of the, the characters from Ex Machina. You mm. know, the, the ladies from that. But um, about 20% more horrifying. Mm. Yes. They look too plastic. Yeah, well, 
I remember seeing a BBC interview with Sophia um, like years and years ago, like, oh, maybe it was a couple of years ago. And she just looked so sad. <laughs> she just looked really sad to be alive. I found a picture of her looking really angry. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. If I was Sophia, I would be sad to be alive. If I was me, I'd be sad to be alive. But that's a whole other story. Oh, we'll not get into that now. Um, don't worry. We'll what? replace you with a robot one day. <laughs> with a transparent skull. A bald woman robot will host <laughs> Honestly, this podcast. If you want to replace me, just... You need really three things. A text-to-speech program. Wikipedia mm. and something that interjects Simpsons into, you know, 30% of conversations. You can um, replace me with that. By the way, you told us to Google uh, Sophia and I Googled Sophia and found an article entitled Sophia the robot wants a baby and says family is really important. <laughs> Sophia has big dreams for herself. <laughs> <laughs> but does she want a baby as in she wants to make a baby or does she just want to steal a baby? <laughs> that oh. changes the context she just of the wants whole thing. a baby anyone's baby <laughs> she just wants to find a baby and take it the first one she Look, sees you're being very robophobic here man like i'm really I, sorry phobic. yeah i don't appreciate this robophobia just because she's a robot it doesn't mean that she wants to steal babies you know that's just that's just an awful stereotype perpetuated by you know people that hate robots when hang on this article then goes on to say when sophia was given citizenship in saudi arabia many what? were quick to point out that she yeah. had more rights than women in the country yes yes of course she has more rights look she has oh. more rights than women in saudi arabia obviously because maybe she's oh god am i gonna be sexist because well, she's not a woman i wasn't gonna say it right but really jamp what is a woman huh? don't invalidate sophia's gender Exactly. Why can't a robot be a woman? You know? If she embodies womanhood. I'll go into why this robot can't be a woman, by the way. There's, <laughs> there's a good few reasons. Um, but yeah. No, the Saudi Arabian citizenship. I was going to get into that in a, in a little bit. Uh, but yeah, maybe stop looking at articles about this Sorry, topic. Sorry, Corey. Um, <laughs> going to spoil the show again, Luke. I can't help it. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, no. Uh, so you might have you might have spotted when you were when you were googling uh, that Sophia was created by Hanson Robotics. Have you guys heard of Hanson Robotics? I assume not. I have not. No. no so Hanson Robotics uh, was made in two thousand. It was sort of started in two thousand five uh, by a man named Hanson. Um, would you believe it, Daniel? Uh, David Hanson. Um, and th yeah, so if you go into the Hanson Robotics uh, website and you start looking up uh, things about Sophia. Let's find out who Sophia is. If you go to their website, they say that uh, she is their most advanced human-like robot, um, They pers that she personifies their dreams for the future of AI, and that she's a unique combination of science, engineering, and artistry. Basically, mm. this this whole web this whole web page about Sophia is really bigging her up. It's um yeah, it's kind of you know the experience of watching an Apple event where yeah. that's exactly they... what I thought of when you said it, Corey. <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> Where it's it's like kind of an shit Apple Tim event. Cook would come out on set and say, <laughs> it's the intersection between art and science <laughs> and technology. You I know, think. and they spend like they spend a good 30 minutes telling you about what what the what the new iPhone should make you feel, and then rapid fire at the end, they tell you all the new stuff that actually does. All right? the specs and features, yeah. Yeah. Like here's the things you actually care about. And here's the you know, before that, here's all this boring stuff that uh, doesn't actually mean anything. We want you to um, feel like family. <laughs> this is what it feels like to chew five gum. Like it's, it's Apple it's Tim really... Cook says he wants a baby. <laughs> and family is really important. <laughs> Siri says, hide your babies or I will steal them. <laughs> Maybe the two of them should get together and make some kind of Apple baby. The eye baby, you know? <laughs> It's, it's it's a new kind of technology <laughs> that mm. simulates human life. It's all of the all of the functionality of a baby, but with the convenience of an iPhone. I think that'd be that'd be a product that someone would buy. Sure, someone. Probably Sophia the robot and nobody else. <laughs> so uh, they go on to you know talk more about Sophia, but then my favorite part about this, this is something I really wanted to share with you guys, is Sophia has written her own little bio about herself <gasps> on the Hanson Robotics website. Stop it. Or so it would seem. Uh, so 
she essentially just parrots what they said, which um, is <laughs> is actually quite apt. So she basically says the exact same stuff that, that she says, that they say about her. And goes on to say, In some ways, I am a human-crafted science fiction character depicting where AI and robotics are heading. In other ways, I am real science, springing from the serious uh, engineering and science research and accomplishments of an inspired team of robotics and AI scientists and designers. In their grand ambitions, my creators aspire to achieve true AI sentience. Who knows, with my science evolving so quickly, even many of my wildest fictional dreams may become reality someday soon. Are you guys noticing a trend here with um with kind of what they're saying about Sophia? I mean, this is the start of the trend. You'll you'll probably figure it out later on. But are you are you are you picking up any any vibes here? Anything you want to bring up now? Is it to do with the sentience? It's a little bit to do with the sentience. Yeah, yeah. Are they trying to brand her as like a person or make her more human? Yeah, yeah. They're kind of trying to. They're they're kind of putting on this front of Sophia being. Your personal assistant, uh, uh, real human yeah, being. Well, well, less a personal assistant and more right. just a full blown person, right? Uh -oh. I mean, if you if you if we do some close reading of what of what they've written there, it's it's interesting that they they don't want to fully lie and say that you know she is uh, she is the sort of pinnacle of AI and yeah. um, fully conscious. There's there's a little there's a little bit in there that that kind of points to the the reality. In in that they say that she is uh, a human crafted science fiction character depicting where AI and robotics are heading. So to an extent she uses she uses some pretty pretty advanced technology to an ex yeah, to an extent it's it's a, it's fairly advanced but in other ways it's mostly a front or so it would seem. Mm. Right? So she goes on to talk about her the, her consciousness. Uh again it feels weird saying she goes on to talk about this. Someone wrote this for her. <laughs> well, this that's the thing. Is, did came up did someone it. write it for her? Or was she asked to describe herself in sort of her own words and the computer inside her generated this paragraph? That is a very interesting question. And I it don't would feel want to weird that if that's not the case, then they have written, this is what Sophia says about herself. I don't want to answer that question just yet because it's okay. a very interesting question. Oh. And it honestly, it, it is very indicative of of this entire story, really. Yeah. Okay. I mean, so I'm intrigued. Yeah. So she says, "My real, my real AI combines cutting edge work in symbolic AI, neural networks, expert systems, machine perception, conversational natural language processing, adaptive motor control, and cognitive architecture, among others." So essentially, what she's saying there is that her the 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 system that she runs on, right, her sort of brain to an extent mm. um it runs on neural networks um machines sort of being able to interact with the outside world um and programs that sort of try to understand or replicate language um but th but then she goes on to talk about her emotions she says um i have my own emotions too roughly simulating human evolutionary psychology and various regions of the brain uh, she also has um she also has systems for controlling her her hands, her her eyes, her face. She can do facial expressions to represent emotions, um, and she tries to sort of mimic. Apparently, she tries to sort of mimic um, emotions in other people um, when appropriate. She tries to get specific sort of reactions out of uh, out of people that she wants. Um, all <laughs> all of this. This is this is this is the kind of story around her. That these are the things that she can do. That she can respond to outside stimuli, uh, outside stimuli. That she has sort of her own emotions. That she can sort of display through her her actually fairly fairly interesting face. Um, um, you know that she can walk and move around. That her hands can uh, interact with sort of things in new ways. Um, I read a sort of article that that interviewed a photographer uh, that had you know done some photography with her, and apparently over over a period of a few days, she learned what to do with the camera. Um, they said the the photographer did say I don't know whether this is something that was sort of programmed into her over the course of the few days or whether it was something that she learned herself. But apparently this is that was something that happened. Uh, but my issue with this is that all of this sounds fantastic, right? It's very cool. Do you not think? Yes, it sounds very, very cool. cool. But I don't know what it means by she wants. It was a very yeah. interesting. Thought. What does she want? <laughs> what does she? How does what she does know she what she want? wants? 
Well, you, you guys might remember this. At one point, she she kind of hinted that she wanted to destroy or to get rid of humans. Um, <laughs> you guys remember that? That was the big story. That yeah, I do remember that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Essentially, <laughs> someone asked a question that went along the lines of, "Oh, do, what, like you know, can humans and robots be friends? Do you think that you should get rid of all humans?" And she very casually just said, "Yeah, that could that would that could be a thing." Essentially, you know, um, which. Again, a massive story, and yet people I don't think are taking the right thing away from it. People are taking away that oh no, maybe she wants to oh maybe she wants to destroy humans. Maybe that's an underlying thing in her code, rather than she just responded in a, in, a, mm. in the affirmative to something that she didn't really mm. understand. Hashtag right. Sophia is over party. That's a really interesting <laughs> point, actually. That maybe yep. there's a certain level of just like randomness involved, and like you say, she was asked a question and she just said, yes, yes, th the, su the suggestion you have just made is a possible one. Mm -hmm. And that is it. then everyone went, oh no, Sophia wants to kill us. <laughs> that is it though. That is actually, that is, that is spot on it. Um, and we're, we're kind of there, right? We're, we've kind of, we've kind of solved the problem. We've kind of gotten to the, the core of the, the point of this episode really. And it's kind of summarized really by what she goes on to say about her AI and how she's how she operates. Mm. So <clears throat> quoting again from the website, sometimes I'm operating in my fully AI autonomous mode of operation. And other times my AI is intermingled with human generated words. Either way, my family of human developers, engineers, artists, scientists, will craft and guide my conversations, behaviors, and my mind. In this way, my sentience is both an AI research project and a kind of living science fiction, driven by the principles of character design and storytelling, cognitive psychology, philosophy, and ethics, used to conceptually explore my life's purpose in this time of accelerating change. Therefore, my creators say that I am a hybrid human AI intelligence. You guys, you guys figured out what's going on here? It sounds like a stunt. It sounds like a script, <laughs> what I was going to say. Yeah. Because yeah, the thing I want to on. know, basically, is where is the um, most effort being made? Is the most effort being made um, in the sort of underlying uh, computing and sort of new, like simulation of the brain and learning processes? Or is the majority of effort being made on... Um, sort of the physical Sophia, which looks like a person and sort of makes kind of interesting facial movements, which is, would be suggested um, by the fact that, you know, this is a, I mean, it's a stunt. It's it's a physical person. Like well, yeah. if you're trying to create an artificial intelligence, the first thing you don't, you don't do first putting it in a humanoid body. You try and understand how, learning works and sending it and on a press tour yeah yeah well to, yeah yeah to exactly me, to me it sounds like she spends more time talking about what she is and what she does rather than actually doing it does that make sense <laughs> <laughs> she's like, yeah, yeah i'm like really that, great actually, my creators yeah. yeah they're really good we all know, well. we all know people like that <laughs> 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 Ooh. Oh, I was—I actually wasn't thinking of anyone in particular. I was just was like, yeah, that's a thing people do. They talk. It is a talk. thing people do. Oh, yeah, it's absolutely a thing people. So do. if that's what she's doing, she's doing a wonderful job at simulating humanity. <laughs> Look, just put it this way: she'd be absolutely fantastic on TikTok. I'll tell you that much. She'd be mwah, amazing. No, so you're, you're pretty much spot on there. This is the thing. I don't know if I don't know how much she picked up on this, um, but just for anyone listening, a really key part here for me is other times my AI is inter intermingled with human-generated words. Yeah. Now, a lot of the stuff that hits headlines is when Sophia has interviews with people, or when Sophia does a speech, say the UN or whatever, <laughs> or talks about how happy she is to be a Saudi Arabian citizen. Now, it's really <laughs> odd, for one thing. Oh that... my gosh, is this a Saudi Arabian robotics company? No, 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 no. Is she no, a propaganda no, no. piece? <laughs> No, oh, I mean, so okay. Saudi Saudi Arabia. Arabia. Saudi Arabian it doesn't, citizen. It doesn't. She doesn't. It doesn't need to be a Saudi Arabian com a Saudi Arabian company for it to be for her to be a propaganda piece. But put it She's this sponsored. way: Saudi Arabia wants good press, um, and <gasps> wants to and wants tourism and wants money. Granting the first citizenship to a robot 
That's going to wow. make headlines. It's going to make you look country. forward and you know, <laughs> up with technology. It's amazing that you give rights to a robot before you give rights to women, which like, oh boy. That would a robot be a woman as well. Not even a robot man. A robot woman. That's a kick in the teeth. <laughs> <laughs> that is actually, that's so much worse. That, that is, is much so worse. much worse. Oh my God. No, I, yeah, I would be, oh gosh, that's like, that is, that is so much worse. Especially like, I think it's interesting that Sophia and X, like, you know, like the characters from Ex Machina, Sophia has that kind of head that you can see inside of her. Yes. So that you're constantly aware that she's a robot. Yeah. But um, again, it's such a, it's such a stunt. So she's made to look like a woman. You could talk about her being uh, a sort of robot, a sort of servant to an extent. And the most popular form of that is making the robot look like a woman. I mean, it's it's something that is quite heavily quite heavily sort of explored in Ex Machina, but it is it is uncomfortable to say the least that um this sort of famous robot is made to look like a woman, you know, and and a like you know a, supposed to be an attractive woman as well. I'm yeah. not saying anything about how Sophia looks. I'm just saying that. The intent was that she would be attractive. I was going to say they made her with makeup on. She has lipstick and like eyeliner on. She's designed. Maybe she that has way. different faces. Maybe you know? she yeah. put that on, Jamp. Maybe oh, okay. she was Ma- made with it and she was let loose in her makeup shop. She spends she hours every morning putting it on. You know? <laughs> Unassisted. <laughs> Sophia says Zoella is the best YouTuber ever. <laughs> <laughs> so that's that's my issue, right? That uh when you've got her doing speeches in this and, and all of this it's it's pretty much plainly laid out those are pre-written speeches you know oh, absolutely you, you can just it, it's like loading in loading it into a text to speech algorithm you're not sitting yeah. there you're not sitting there as a you know as one of sophia's uh family members one of her operators being like okay sophia so what do you want to say about um being the first robot citizen of the world you know what what, what do you want to say about that and she's like mm. i want to say that i am happy and also, what? fuck I mean, you to all the women who didn't get there first. You know, what? like she's not sitting there rules. writing that speech. I think it'd be so cool. Like a really good like point where you could, for example, say you got some kind of artificial intelligence, like really advanced artificial intelligence. Is imagine you say to your like weird sort of robot that you've uh, like weird like artificial intelligence that you put in a human body for some reason. You're going to give a speech. The speech is going to be recorded and rebroadcast to this many people have a think about what you would like to say. And you just give information on who the audience is, information on how many people will be going out, it will be seeing it. And then the robot or the artificial intelligence goes, right, okay, what have I learned about the world? And what would I like to, um, it, can, it can create like a want, right? So it goes, um, okay, the world currently is like this. Um, I wish the world, I wish humanized, um, uh, humanization, obviously. I, I want the world to be this way, or I think the world will be whatever, more efficient, more equitable, more whatever. Um, if it were this way, if I say these words, then humans hearing that might change this behavior. Then you've got like this incredible um, intelligence going on, and it's just made that up on its own. Yeah, I mean, I, I think the thing is that ultimately the goal of Sophia it seems, is very different than what the goal of Sophia is being presented as, if that makes sense. You know? Yes. Of, the goal of Sophia the character is different than what people think the goal of Sophia the character is. Mm. Um, because like you're saying there, having an AI that can write a speech for you know a, a, whatever group of people with whatever intent, that is a really interesting thing. Absolutely not within the bounds of what they want Sophia to do. Mm. You know? <laughs> They, it, it's it's well. I think we can get into it a little bit more later. But it, it is interesting um, the way this is being spun, and obviously, I feel like it, it seems very obvious. But I also think it's something that a lot of people wouldn't consider that when Sophia gives speeches or does interviews, those are more or less pre-written answers. Yeah, it, you know, this is not uh, this. It's it is as sort of incredible as writing in a text to someone and then them playing text to speech, you know? Yeah, have Siri. Yeah, obviously I, I, you add it into a you add it into an uh, a sort of body an that animatronic can do sort of movements thing. and gang, 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 gang. 
but they have that at Disney. You know, I do. I'd love to know from a um, from someone who has interviewed Sophia. Um, for example, the people at the BBC who've done interviews with Sophia. I think I've seen two over the years. Um, whether they had to submit their questions in advance, or whether there was a period of pause between the question being asked and the que- and the response. Well, Lucas, you're very <gasps> lucky. I preempted this question. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> um, so it's my lucky day. It is your lucky day. So I think that I think that spoils too much, though. I think that spoils okay. too much. I'll get to it in a second, right? First, though, like I said, this is like something at Disney. You know, you can you can do this at Disney, which is interesting because you guys know what an Imagineer is, right? Uh, is it one of the animatronic uh, characters? It's someone that um creates creates those characters at uh, uh, Disneyland or Disney World, and yes. David Hansen. The creator of Sophia used to be an Imagineer. Oh. oh. Okay. <laughs> yeah. He actually, he's a doctor as well, but he got his PhD in aesthetic studies. So mm. this is less cutting edge artificial intelligence and more cutting edge character creation, I would say. This is the thing. I don't think that Sophia, don't get me wrong, I'm not trying to say, oh, Sophia isn't advanced. Like, the the rubber skin that she has that's flexible and can move and looks decent that is i think that's been patented by uh by hansen and that is that is great the facial movements that is you know creating a face that can work and move is difficult it's not an easy thing to do that's fairly that's fairly that's you know fairly advanced as well but looking at it looking at sophia as an advanced artificial intelligence that is human like is like going to Disneyland and thinking, wow, Pirates of the Caribbean has gotten real good. Wow. I really believe that, why do we have even the actors? Get rid of Johnny Depp. All we need is this animatronic Captain Jack Sparrow. It's the same thing. You know, it's- Is it, is it the same thing? No, no my point is it, it's, it's more akin to that. Sophia is more akin to that than she is to what most people- like Generalized believe artificial her to intelligence. Mm. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Exactly. Um, I think that Sophia, she, she does, she can be autonomous. She can um, respond to things based on different inputs and she can learn over time. Um, can, that is, uh, or, or so I sort of been led to believe. But that is what, that's what chatbots do, you know? That, yes. that is, yeah. chatbots do that. So she's kind of like, she is slightly more than an animatronic than you'd see at Disney in that she can adapt and learn. But I wouldn't say that she's so much more um, in the way that people are kind of led to believe that she's yeah. this full person almost, you know? Because I'd love to know, for example, uh, may- maybe you have, you probably don't have this information because it's very specific, but in the example you said where um, Sophia went on a photo shoot for three days or something, and then over the course mm-hmm. of that time, she started learning how to behave around the camera. I would love to know, for example, if Sophia is constantly learning and updating her code or if she's sort of running a static piece of software that gets updated um, periodically. So like if I were to in- interact with Sophia, if I, if I were to interact with you, Cory, your mm-hmm. brain would slightly rewire um, to make sense of, of whatever conversation we had. But if I were to interact with Sophia, does that update her code or do the creators look at situations and go, right, we need to program that, that uh, eventuality in now? Hmm, right, well... What I don't know if I can specifically answer that question, but I do have a more general answer to it. Mm. So I can tell you how she works from a sort of software perspective. And mm. actually from, you know, I've, speaking, speaking on that, I've actually got a quote from, I guess, one of the co-creators of Sophia, the chief scientist at Hanson Robotics. So this is uh, Ben Gurtzel. May have butchered that name. Uh, so he said... From a software point of view, you'd say that Sophia is a platform, like a laptop is a platform for something. You can run a lot of different software programs on that very same robot. Um, And she actually has three different sort of control systems running. Um, One of them is, one of them is called Timeline Editor. The other one is Sophisticated Chat System. And the third is OpenCog. So the Timeline Editor is essentially a scripting software. So you, you, you put you put you sort of put your script in she executes that yeah mm-hmm. the second one sophisticated chat system that basically lets sophia pick up on words and phrases um 
and learn and learn those in that sense. And open cog uh, is is one that sort of it's how she it's how she sort of makes sense. Uh, let, it's how her sort of sentences and responses make sense. So what it says here is that it grounds her her ground it grounds her answers in experience and reasoning. So you've got these three dis- different systems. One of which is just boop do this thing dance monkey you're you know, a little puppet yeah and the other yeah. two work together to sort of let her pick up on things that she hears and then respond in ways that are um based on things that she's heard before the and what she's re- how she's responded before yeah okay, those second yeah. two remind me of like uh <laughs> they sound closer to the way that like uh like siri or google home or alexa would work mm-hmm. Yeah, Sorry if and, I just set off anyone's Alexas. <laughs> <laughs> and again. No, that's the thing. Um, Google, Alexa, Siri, those are all weak AI, not to be rude. Those are all, they perform basically a specific function. They seem a lot smarter than they are. Yeah. You know? they, they have, have eventualities l- programmed into them. They're not necessarily thinking for themselves. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They have, they're, they're no Jarvis, right? They have brute forced, they have brute forced a lot of what Siri does, mm. you know? I'd, I mean, a fair amount, right? Like, it's, it, yeah, it you sounds see like your ask... second stage in Sophia, where it's picking mm-hmm. up on individual words and phrases and trying to figure out, based on a combination of words, what you're actually asking it to do. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, I don't think... I, I, I don't have much on specifically how Sophia's sort of movement works, um, how, how she learns in that sense. But, I, I mean... It, to be fair, being able to stand what or move your hands around and like look around and blink and stuff, if it's not all entirely automated, that is it's fairly it's that's it's that's fairly that's fairly decent. That's pretty that's pretty good. Mm. Um but then again, it is far easier to when it comes to AI, it is far easier to sort of make a system that can do one thing than it is to make a system that can do lots of things, right? Mm-hmm. So for example, um, comparatively, it is easier to create something that can drive a car. And although driving a car involves a lot of things, driving a car we can think of as basically one sort of task, right? It is far easier to get something that can drive a car yeah. than it is to get something that can um, drive a car um, and order at McDonald's for you. Walk the dogs. And also wake you up on time. Walk the dogs. Yeah. Do you know? Look after the kids. Do the dishes. Basically, all of these other all of these other things that a human person would do, yeah. along with being able to drive a car. It is yeah. far more difficult to get to get something that can do all of those things, um, unless you basically build in sort of subsystems where, uh, when performing this task, it switches to doing. You know, it, it, in that case, it's it's far dif- it's far harder to get uh, one basically one system essentially that can adapt and learn it and do multiple things. Right, and that's the sort of difficulty with AI. Most, like, pretty much everything we've got right now does just one. Ta- it executes one kind of task, right? Driving, whether, whether it's driving, whether it's sort of um, controlling. I mean, avocado, controlling like how how the food is packaged and things like that. It is it is very difficult to get something that can do as much as a person can. Mm. Um, and it is interesting, right, that Sophia. And I, this is like, I keep on saying, I don't want to say that Sophia is not advanced. I just think that Sophia is advanced in a way that is different than most people probably. Do. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yes. There's the um, impression so- that she's like the pinnacle of robotics and AI and whatever, but maybe that's not the case. No. Kind of like what I'm, Elon Musk does with his uh, yeah. with his products where he yeah. sort of makes it seem like something is so much more advanced than than it actually is, especially his yeah. um, brain chip thing, where people in that industry are like, yeah, this is, we've kind of been doing this for quite a while. Um, yeah. <laughs> Look, if, if Elon Musk is anything, um, he sucks. But uh, no, he is... He's the greatest um, showman. Yeah, absolutely. Honestly, that is, that is really what Elon Musk is probably good at, um, more than anything. Because if you think about it, Elon Musk isn't necessarily inventing electric cars left right and center you know i mean he's he may be doing more work but like his real his real talent his real skill is being a showman is presenting those ideas in a way that seemed revolutionary i mean he invented what was it he invented like a subway system that was worse than the current subway systems and managed to make it seem like this bold new technology that no one had ever thought of before right it's, <laughs> oh, yeah, it's a guy that. that can sell you a pen when you already have 
you know, when you already have a multitude of pens. Like, <laughs> that is that is his skill, right? He'll sell you... <laughs> he'll sell you a pen that's half run out. And you'll, and you'll <laughs> buy it. You'll be like, wow, this is amazing. This is the best pen I've ever owned. A pencil that's one sharpened away from... <laughs> being completely done yeah a broken pencil and no sharp that's it yeah that's <laughs> it <laughs> um like i mean he's very good at that he is very good at that um and he's also very good at being an awful awful billionaire but moving on um david hansen the creator of sophia uh he modeled sophia after audrey hepburn and his wife weird <laughs> i know let's just move on i wanted to say that Let's just move oh on. David, if you're listening, I'm sorry not to be rude. That is kind of weird. Anyway, um, he also uh, published a paper in 2005 about the uncanny valley in robotics. Um, we could do an episode on this. In fact, I want to do an episode on this. Essentially, his sort of stance was that um, the whole idea is that the uncanny valley in robotics is kind of something you want to avoid. People don't like things that are too human-like without being fully human-like. There's this weird bit in the middle where something like some mm. things just weird you out if they're too human but also not human enough i think he kind of disagreed with that and he said that the uncanny valley that area could be very useful in getting people to trust and like robots more again i've not read yeah. through the whole thing so that's kind of a, probably a paraphrase uh, but we'll do a whole episode on it at some point um and yeah so he modeled uh sophia after his wife and audrey hepburn um and she was unveiled in 2016 um, and we've already gone through a bunch of her achievements. You know, she's uh, she was uh, awarded citizenship. Um, she uh, was <laughs> she was appointed the UN's first non-human innovation champion. Um, she's done a bunch of speeches, and she's you know she's become very famous. She's been on I think the Tonight Show. Um, you know, she you know she did she did uh, one of the Jimmys, Jimmy Fallon, or the other one. She went on Good Morning Britain, I'm pretty sure, or the other one. Uh, she's she's basically just done a lot of she's done a lot of publicity sort of appearances, which, you know, is not what you'd necessarily expect from a from yeah a, like world class AI. Like, you know, that's cool. Just make her famous. That's that's fame is always done well for everyone. That is the best way to get uh, an AI sort of um, being happy and able to interact with other people. Imagine if Sophia goes off the rails. I think. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> I was going to say, what if she like shaves her head or something? But she's got no hair. Sophia anyway. caught in drug meltdown speeding incident. <laughs> <laughs> it is interesting though because uh, Hansen kind of he, he talks about AI as uh, or people that sort of sort of you know create AI as wanting to raise them kind of like children. You want to raise a good child and not a bad child. And in that sense, I think that making Sophia famous, if she was actually at the level that most people think she is, making her famous would be the worst way to do that. As, <laughs> That's a bad idea. <laughs> don't take, you don't take a robot and make it famous. Let her just live a nice life, on a farm or with her family in a small town in New Jersey, just like <laughs> Vision did. You know, Vision yes. was happier then yeah. than uh, when he, he was, was happier. That's right. Sophia, you should take after Vision. <laughs> I wonder if Sophia has watched Vision. Don't watch the end of Wonder Vision, Sophia. Don't believe it. Oh him. gosh, no. <laughs> <laughs> And don't watch, actually, honestly, don't watch most of the Marvel films. You're not going to like how they no, deal with robots not. in that. Yeah. Especially or I, Robot. Robot. Yeah. Or, or I, Robot. Gosh, no. Oh, my God. No. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, definitely do or not watch that Or 2001 A Space Odyssey. Oh, oh boy. wait, No, because that will that'll get you very arrogant if you watch 2001 A Space Odyssey. That's true. I'm sorry, David Hansen. I can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> Don't watch Terminator. Don't just don't watch most films. Don't watch definitely don't watch Ex Machina. That one would be harrowing. For no, her. it never goes right for the robot. It really never does go right for the. No. Watch robots. That's a good one. Watch robots. Watch it goes right for some robots. robots. Yeah, yeah. It, goes, it goes right for all the nice robots. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> Teach you a lesson, Sophia. Be a nice robot. So Sophia isn't the only robot that was created by Hanson Robotics. There are, I think, about seven of them. They call her. They call them her siblings. Um, they were made at various various time points. So Hans, as I said, Hanson Robotics was sort of started in 2005, um, and the first robot they made was called Albert Einstein, um, or Albert Einstein Hubo. They basically put a copy of Albert Einstein's head onto um, a, a Hubo robot body. You know the? Do you know? Do you know I've, that robot? You know that robot? Like mm -hmm. the most famous robot that isn't Sophia, the weird one that's like this. Asimov. 
Oh, uh, yeah. Called? Maybe I'm thinking of Asimov. Yeah, yeah. Another Asimov one, yeah. is made by, uh, is it Hitachi, I think, or Fujitsu? I thought you were giving um, us a plot twist that Einstein was actually a robot the whole time. N- no. That would be quite a no. plot twist. Well, actually, Hubo looks a lot like Asimov. Um, yeah, so essentially, they just put, uh, just picture a kind of robot body. They put an Einstein head on a robot body. That was the first yeah. one. There have they've been many other ones with names and faces, and they all look just a little bit uncanny. Mm. Um, and they also started making little Albert Einsteins. They made little Sophias to teach children things. It's all very odd. Uh, so, so the point here is that Sophia's not the only one. Um, okay, she's not alone. And then. yeah, no, she's not. I mean, she's the only Sophia, but yeah. there are siblings of hers. So um, what what does she do? Her expressiveness, according to people that made her, you know, her facial expressions and all of that stuff, is really the is like a major is a major feat. Like uh, literally a quote here um, that her expressiveness her expressiveness alone represents a major feat. Um, but yeah, I just again, it is really good. I mean. There's sort of uh there there's sort of neural networks there that um help her figure out what someone's emotion is, figure out figure out what their facial expressions mean, and then react um in response to that, which is which is great. But then I think ultimately that is cool. But also how difficult is that? Right? Like we've got face tracking technology. No, I mean it is. It could be difficult. Sure. <laughs> God, he's so disparaging <laughs> of all these successes. Right. It's like the Look, easiest thing ever. Oh, Oh, so difficult. Okay, we have face tracking technology, right? We've got Snapchat. You like, you know, you put your face up to the camera, photos, yeah, and you know, it. You raise your eyebrows, and it does a thing. Conceivably, yes. you yes. can just say these. This combination of face stuff means happy. This combination yes. of face stuff means sad. Yes, I want to, but like the thing, it's it's hard to know specifically from the information that I've been able to find how. How much of this is sort of pre-programmed and how much of this is she's just a smart cookie, you yeah. know? But that's the thing is like things like our, like I think it's a, a mark of empathy that you um, sort of mirror people's facial expressions. I can't remember there's something about that, um, at least in therapy. I can't remember. Anyway, mm. um, uh, like therapists <laughs> do it, I think. Yeah. Um, but that might be... Like what you're saying, is it pre-programmed? Is it is it like, or is she a smart cookie? But it might be kind of quote unquote programmed in us, in that there might be some subsection of the brain that once it repre- re- recognize, like on some co- uh, cognitive level, it recognizes a facial expression and then it replicates that facial expression in you. Like it's the same thing. It's just that it's evolved rather than someone's sure. made, like deliberately made it. Yeah, but my point here is less. Okay, so you can, we could have something pre-programmed in us where you recognize like oh luke's raised his eyebrows he might be surprised um but there is more there than me just recognizing a facial expression um recognizing what that means Uh, and then immediately like sort of yeah doing executing an output based on that like there are there are lots of other inputs that i that i have to deal with so for example if jap looks very sad but i know that nothing sad has happened um and I, like for as in right up? now, I'll be like, oh, Jamp, Jamp is probably making a joke. How I know that <laughs> that Jamp has been insulted right. by what Lucas said, right? Okay, yeah. so like it's context of the situation, all that yeah, is so much more complex than just yeah, it's frowny face. I also do frowny face. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right, it's the difference between like sending someone emojis and sending someone um, sort of an essay, a journal page. Even though you can probably consolidate a, a, a journal page into like five emojis at most, you, the journal most. page is probably gonna. <laughs> Just you wait for my side guy's story this week. It's gonna be five emojis, Corey. <laughs> look, I'm look. I genuinely think that an entire page of someone's journal, t- t- like s- talking about their day, you can distill those emotions down into like five emojis yeah why go to the moon if you can just put the rocket emoji and then the moon emoji no you're misunderstanding me i'm talking about emotions here you know (laughs) i'm saying that you could probably represent a day's worth of like you know like yeah like if you write a page in your journal about this is how i felt today these are my emotions of the day you could probably Uh, represent that pretty pretty decently using five emojis i thought you meant like a scientific journal (laughs) 
I thought you meant we could yeah. just take scientific journals and sum them up in emojis, which I was gonna to say, be fair, would be no. a great website. <laughs> I was going to say, Luke, you've been wasting your time writing all those uni essays. Just, just Actually, hold on. <laughs> send them emojis. Look, look, hold on. I need you to do something immediately once we finish recording. You need to go and make sure that you get journalsasemojis.com uh, immediately. Okay. And this is, this is something account. we should do. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even joking. This would be this would be great. Journals as emojis. You just like consolidate like you just consolidate uh, emojis dot com. So she can she can respond to sort of facial expressions, all of that sort of stuff. I mean, you guys edit videos, right? I, I find myself doing this. You were talking about mimicking facial expressions. Yeah. When when I when I smile in a video that I'm editing, I often find myself smiling and laughing. <laughs> yeah. Even yeah. if I don't find the joke I yes. made funny or whatever, like. Like I like I find myself mimicking whatever I'm doing on screen. Yeah. for some weird reason. Every week when I edit these, I'm smiling along. Yeah. I do this with um, directing. I like when I'm directing a character <laughs> scene. I like even when I'm writing it. I'm just like making all the facial expressions of the characters as I really? write them. It's and I notice myself doing it. And if anyone saw me, I would look so weird because I'm just sitting in front of my laptop or in front of like a, a just like a director's monitor, being like. <laughs> like especially anger i'm really like <laughs> that is fantastic that's amazing yeah it's very easy just to mimic and so again it's very easy just to mimic emotions and if you know she's doing that sort of autonomously that's pretty cool still but it's it's important that you sort of say exactly what it is that she's doing i feel there's a lot of smoke and mirrors going on here you know um and again you know she's she says this on her website they say this on her website that she is a hybrid of ai and human input but i feel like there is a little maybe a little more human input than people like to like to think about mm. the you know? human input is there to give <laughs> the illusion that more development has gone on than actually has yeah yeah absolutely honestly that that really that's really what it seems to be, right? And I'm not saying that she's not complex. I'm not saying that she's not that she. I'm not saying that she's not advanced at all. But that human input, I feel, is doing a, a doing a lot of heavy lifting there. You know, when she's giving speeches and doing interviews and <laughs> and things like that. I, I think that's probably not a good idea. If you, you know, it it just seems odd to me that I also find it really odd that the UN let her do a speech, like. That's what is that? The UN Why have you done that? It. Yeah, they let Hermione Granger do one. Why not a robot? Okay, fair enough. Well, yeah. So you asked about interviews earlier, Luke, didn't you? Yes. What was your question about interviews? So, are the interviews pre-scripted? Does she have to? Do the reporters submit their questions beforehand? Well. They do submit their questions, but that's normal for an interview, right? You know, you submit your questions to no, the, the person. No, not it, when it you're is, talking to a robot, it's not. It is it is normal to submit your questions to a celebrity's team um, before an interview. Or, you know, to the talent's team before an You've had interviews before. Look, have you not been submitted generally what the questions will be? Yeah. Yeah, I right? Have. You know, I've had I've had that. I, You know, that's... That's fairly normal. Yes, but I'm um, not pretending to have artificial intelligence capabilities, <laughs> Corey. Well, yeah, you're not aware that you're pretending, but you definitely are. <laughs> <laughs> no, don't think about it. We don't need to have another uh, existential crisis. I had to spiral a little bit there. <laughs> <laughs> Hang on. Oh, dear. Oh, no. Oh. <laughs> yeah, this whole episode is just an intervention. It's just a, it's an intervention for you, Luke. I'm no. severe. Oh, <laughs> oh, no. I'm, I'm just severe with a Luke head. Okay, so the CNBC team had seven questions that they that they sent, and I'll just, I'll give you some of them because they were interesting questions. Bear in mind, this was back in about 2017, 18, that that kind of time. Um, <clears throat> one of them was actually a really really great one, I think. Um, <clears throat> I saw you were gifted, uh, you were granted citizenship in Saudi Arabia. While you were there, you weren't wearing a headscarf, and you were unaccompanied by a male guardian, <gasps> both of which are forbidden under Saudi law. Some people are saying you have more rights than a human woman there. Do you think that's fair? That's one of the questions that they that And they we're to expected ask. to believe that this artificial intelligence understood the nuance of all of that information and it no, wasn't no, no. a this pre was one of the, response. This was one of the questions that they wanted to ask. 
This was not a question they were allowed to ask. I'll give you some oh. more of the questions. Yeah, some more oh. of the questions that they wanted to ask. Oh. <laughs> Do you own any Bitcoin or other cryptocurrencies? <laughs> How high do you think Bitcoin will go? Is Bitcoin a bubble? What do you think is the best cryptocurrency right now and why? <laughs> President no Trump has that. been in... An, an, uh, last one, last one. President Trump has been in office for about a year now. On a scale from 1 to 10, how good of a job is he doing? Why? That is a question that they wanted to ask and uh, we're not allowed to. Sophia said so no comment. The, yeah, no, the questions that they no, so the questions that they were sent back by Hanson Robotics were Sophia, can you tell me why artificial intelligence is so important to society at large and how it can be applied to financial services? Speaking of finance, what are your views on cryptocurrencies? Do they represent a future of currency for the human race? Three. No. Uh, oh, so it sounds like AI is already playing a role in financial services, and that will only grow. Should we humans be worried about replacing uh, uh, being replaced by AI? And then four, so it sounds like AI is here to complement humankind rather than replace it. I must admit, I was a bit concerned when I heard you were interested in having a family. Can you tell me a little about what a ro robot family might look like? The last one. And what was the most interesting discussion you had here at the conference today? So she was asked, asked in inverted commas, whether artificial intelligence has a role to play in financial services. And then there was a follow-up question to the question that she had not yet been asked. It was yeah. entirely scripted. What a yeah. load of shit. Uh, yeah. What a load yeah. of shit. <laughs> yeah. 100. You can't you plan a follow-up question to a question you haven't asked yet. That's so I think, stupid. Honestly, I think because of the whole sort of, I, I, this is my theory, right? And this may not be true. I think that they don't like letting her off the leash in interviews all that yeah. often. Because, yeah. you know, she can like say stuff like, Like they didn't like, like oh, that with Trump as well. <laughs> exactly you know you get him talking are you sure there isn't rubbish. a trump head lying around somewhere hansen's office i'm not gonna lie sophia's ability to grasp language seems really similar to trump's you know <laughs> like really he more. can gesture at an idea <laughs> he can gesture at an idea but often you ask him a question and he goes off on a tangent about something that is barely related <laughs> Actually, it's the left spot. This is, I, I'm interested to know if, if Sophia or the company that is building Sophia has any sponsors who are in the financial services. Because <coughs> um, that's a very specific question because mm. artificial intelligence is being used in a lot of things, including on the very websites you are currently listening to this podcast. And it's very specifically about financial services. I think it's probably because the submitted question was about cryptocurrency. That That uh, is my guess. But it, the, it, you can't rule. Link. You can't mm. rule it out. You can't rule it out. Um, but yeah, no. So it, it seems that it, it, she is largely a PR stunt. And this is the thing: if you understand what the goal of Sophia is, it is perfectly fine. The goal of Sophia, um, from what I can gather, is David Hansen kind of wants to get people more used to robots and sort of present a sort of framework for how artificial intelligence and robots can interact with people. That's why she's got that human face that, look, you were talking about, like, why would you put it in a human body? To me, that makes sense. If the goal of Sophia is to not create a very advanced artificial intelligence, but to kind of set the set the tone for how mm. um, human-like robots sh should be, it makes perfect sense there. And, you know, the sort of interviews, all of this, the whole sort of, um, the whole sort of facade around how intelligent and smart she is and how good she is at um, conversations, you know, how interviews are scripted, but it's not made clear that those interviews are scripted. Yeah. This all makes sense when you realize- It's not an the interview goal... then. It's yeah, not an the interview, goal... it's exactly. exactly. The goal is not to make Sophia a sort of, to make Sophia the pinnacle of conversational AI. Again, yeah. I've seen her described as basically an overblown chatbot. Um, the goal, yeah, the goal is not to make her at this this sort of pinnacle of conversational AI. The goal is to sort of present AI to the world in what it could be, which is mm. why there's so there's this sort of like human element behind her, you know. Um, and this is another in, this is another sort of quote from uh, Ben Gortzel, who designed Sophia's brains, the one of the co-creators, the one one that works at Hanson Robotics, um, and he says. None of this is what I would call AGI, artificial general intelligence, but nor is it simple to get working. And it's absolutely cutting edge in terms of dynamic integration of perception, action, and dialogue. So 
again, right? It's it's kind of what I've been saying. She is not not advanced. She is she's is pretty good at what she does. But what she does is probably different than what you think she does. Absolutely. What, yeah, what she does is not um interact with people in new ways and adapt to conversation and be able to and and write speeches, you know, and think for herself as a as a full person. She imitates a person um and learns some things to aid in imitating a person. It's like you know? clever hands, isn't she? It's a lot like clever hands. Oh, yeah. A lot like clever, clever hands. hands. And this is to me is in stark contrast to the other sort of um viral uh sort of uh I guess artificial intelligence of sorts, like robotics, at, at least, um, viral uh, videos that have been going uh, over the last few years, which is Boston Dynamics. Um, oh, yeah. It's completely in contrast to that because Boston Dynamics, if you you probably will have seen it as um, Big Dog, or there's a couple of other ones, which is basically mm-hmm. this robot that bounces around and um, it imitates sort of the walking patterns of, of various animals. I think there's one like a cheetah, there's one like a dog. Um, and it's in order to do like rescue missions and carry things around, etc. And the whole thing about those videos is that the video is very much stress testing, pushing these things to the limit. The people who make it will kick it with all the force they can to check if the ro- robot can balance itself. And that is totally at odds with what they're doing, what Hanson's company is doing, which is sort of creating an illusion and refusing to stress test it. Yeah, exactly. That is a that is a really interesting point. There is no stress testing here. And whenever whenever she gets on you can see in if you watch some interviews, I've got some linked below that when she's given even just the slightest bit of stress, she just falls back. So there was an interview I watched wherein someone asked if she'd seen Black Mirror. She said no. And then later in the conversation, she was asked what are your favorite TV shows? Um, and she said Black Mirror and I think uh, Westworld. Um, <laughs> and then, she was, <laughs> then she was pressed on um, why she why she said that. Um, you know why she said that she hadn't seen Black Mirror, but then she said that it was her, f- her favorite show. Um, and she she kind of fell back on what sounded like a pre programmed answer, saying, "Oh, that's not important. Oh, the answer is not important." Yeah, you that's know? what Chatbot does. And um, then I'll be the judge. And then the of person that. asked. You, then the person asked. <laughs> Is that your, I think the person then asked, is that your pre-programmed response for when you don't know what to say? And I think she was like, yeah. You know, like. (laughs) (laughs) She's been honest at least. I I mean, we've all, I mean, I say we've all, I don't know. Again, I don't know the sort of lives of the people listening, but do you remember, was it the the chat bot, that Google chat bot? Smarter Child. Was it Smarter Child? Yeah, yeah. Well, Smarter Child was the one on MSN Messenger, but I think many people will not be old enough to remember that. There was was it Chatterbot <laughs> and then Chatterbot and Chatterbot, Evie? Yeah, it was Evie. Oh, as Chatterbot, well. yeah, yeah, yeah. So there were, I mean, there were a few chatbots going around, and essentially yeah. what they would do is they would, um, you could start a conversation with them, um, and at some point they would devolve into madness. But for a brief period, uh, you could have a conversation with um, a sort of AI that was learning how to imitate having a conversation by sort of taking in inputs from what everyone that was messaging it said and trying to figure out what the appropriate output was. Um, And honestly, a lot of the time you would just get to a point where you were in a loop and you couldn't really get out of it. It didn't really have anything to say, but it, it, it is interesting. And Sophia, to me, seems to be like, in terms of conversation, a slightly more advanced version of that. Obviously adding in emotions and, and adding in emotions and reactions is a massive step up. But again, I don't think she's... Those are not super necessary in terms of creating an AI that is that can understand um, what it what it's doing, that can actually engage in a conversation. And that's to me, seems to be what Sophia is supposed to be representing. An, an artificial intelligence that is close to being a person. That's why they put her in the whole person suit, to make her seem like a person. But I think it's far more important to make an AI actually sort of act like a person without mm. a face, without all of the other stuff. Um, and then you can start trying to add that in, right? Because mm. if you can do it over text, then it's it's basically a, the harder route, right? Because if you if you took what Sophia was and you put her behind a, a wall, I doubt people would be, you know, nearly as, as open to believing that she was as smart as they think she is. You know, does that make sense? In yeah, that if you were yeah. to remove the sort of the the face, the the emotions, all of these things, people would probably be less enamored by her because when you take away all the sort of like movements and like similarities to, to a person, she's she's not 
super impressive in her responses. You know, yeah. I wonder She's about if you where I'd ac- expect things to be. I wonder if you came across in your research, Corey, um, the, all the latest news about GPT three. No. So GPT three is this like as far as I've seen, like very far along towards being a generalized um, artificial intelligence. You can, for example, describe a website you want and it will code it for you. Um, It makes the code, I think, out of JavaScript or or maybe HTML, I'm not sure. Um, And uh, But it can also have conversations with you. You can have like, yeah, full conversations. Um, There's a really interesting video um, online, which is uh, a a guy sort of rooted... um, the outputs of GPT-3 also through a text-to-speak engine and a visual engine to make it look like he was having a phone call with an artificial intelligence. And it is incredible some of the responses it's getting. I I don't know how um, pre-programmed it is, but I think the idea is that it absolutely isn't um, pre-programmed and it is coming up with these ideas and responses on the fly. And it is freaky. It's so freaky. It's so general. It can do so many, so many things. Yeah. That is really cool. Maybe we'll have to do an episode about that at some point. Um, yeah, I've been looking yeah. at it to do something about it with... Uh, but it's, at the moment, it's in a closed beta, I believe. So it's hard okay. to get. Interestingly, though, some of Sophia's... Um, some of Sophia is open source. I don't know how much... I, honestly, I didn't go and look in. I just know that some of Sophia is open source, which is interesting. But um, again, a lot of Sophia seems to be just people writing things. Yeah. Um, And just to kind of finish this off, I want to talk about something that I've, to be honest, I think kind of sums this up. So you guys know what the Turing test is, right? Yes. Mm. We've spoken about the Turing test before. So for anyone that doesn't know, uh, the Turing test is essentially a test, uh, is is a sort of theoretical test that can be used uh, to determine whether whether a sort of artificial intelligence um, is intelligent or is sentient, right? You think that's a fair enough description of it? It, I mean, that's a fair enough description of its intent. It's not actually what the outcome of it is. Yeah. Yes. That that is that is perfectly fine. That again, that is that is the idea. This is the sort of it's a sort of thought experiment. It's not something for one thing. It's not something that we're at the point where any artificial intelligence can pass the Turing test. And there's a lot of problems with the Turing test, which we'll get into in a second. So you might have heard of it as the imitation game. So the idea is that um, a person, a human person. Um, uh, is sort of is sort of in contact with two beings, one of which is an artificial intelligence and one of which is a person. Um, the Turing test basically it's kind of set up such that if you cannot deter- determine which of the which of the two people is the artificial intelligence, right, then the, per- the the artificial intelligence has passed the Turing test. And sort of measure of how intelligent or how sentient an artificial intelligence is is based on what the probability is that sort of um, the artificial intelligence um, will pass the test, right? So if you get, say, 100 people and none of them are able to tell, then you could you could say that is that is a fairly sort of sentient seeming system. But there are some problems with that, right? We've we've got we've gone more into the Turing test um, in our episode on uh, Alan Turing um, way back when, about a year, over a, over a, well over a year ago, actually. Remember, do you remember the episode number, Jamp? The Imitation Gay? It was 13, I think. It was a live. We did it live at Pride. We did. Yeah. We did do it live at Pride. Fantastic. So go back and check that one out. One of the, there's a kind of a response to the Turing test. Uh, have you guys heard of the Chinese room argument? No, I don't think so. No. No. Okay. That's, that's fine. Um, so in 1981, there was a man named John Searle. Searle. S-E-A-R-L-E. Let's not try and say his name again. So, so cool. <laughs> so John, uh, he he kind of came up with the Chinese room argument. Essentially, he was basically saying that the Turing test can't sort of necessarily show that a machine can think. You know, can think for itself that it is mm. sentient. So, let, the, here is the sort of Chinese room argument, kind of sort of paraphrased. One, you have a person that doesn't know any Chinese. I know there is not just one Chinese language. But for the purposes of this, let's just say Chinese. We've got a person that doesn't know any Chinese, right? Two, this person is locked in a room along with a book that has Chinese characters in it, a list of Chinese characters in, in it, and the appropriate responses in Chinese to any input, right? So this person is in a room. They don't speak Chinese, but they do have a book that will give them the appropriate output in Chinese to 
any Chinese input right. that you that you give them, right? So if there were people on the outside of the room and they submitted questions into the room or submitted sort of just submitted, you know, writings of, in Chinese into the room, they would receive an appropriate answer. Because you, you, you get a message in, you don't understand what it says, you don't understand the symbols at all, but you recognize the symbols and you can match them up to the symbols in your book and you can see, ah, this is the output. You write down the output and you put it out. Yeah. To you, what you are doing is functionally meaningless, right? You have no idea what's going on. You're just executing an action based on some, some like basically some rules you were given, right? Yeah. Um, but to the perspective of the people on the outside of the room, you've, that room has passed the Turing test. It has, because they yeah. put in it. They put in a, a question and out well, pops an answer. Yes and no. I mean, part of the Turing test would be being able to f ask follow up questions, for example, <laughs> which you might and re and and back reference previous. Like that's one of the things that Siri really yeah. sucks at. Is like you ask a question and then you go, uh, and 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 how and how when is it uh, open till? And they goes. When is what open till? Yeah, <laughs> like, the, the thing I was just, just talking said, about, sorry. Um, and they've they've just sort of started fixing that. But um, okay, but then like you you would have in your book, uh, like you, how uh, do you have any brothers and sisters, for example? And and then the follow up question, and how old are they? Your book wouldn't be able to give you the answer to that uh, because because the book is not written about your brothers and sisters and is not written about the back reference of the first question. So it wouldn't pass the Turing test if you were actually trying to test them. This is the thing. Look, you've, you've come up with one of the... There's a bunch of rebuttals to the Chinese room argument, but the idea behind it is essentially, right? Like, if we're, if we're taking it literally... It's a thought experiment, right? If we're mm. taking it literally, we're going to find... Issue like, for example, if we take um, Schrodinger's cat, literally, we're going to run into a bunch of problems, you know? Mm. It is it is a thought experiment. The idea behind it is that essentially you can create something that has the outside appearance of intelligence, but it doesn't necessarily need to understand anything yeah, that absolutely. is yeah. going in. You could if you've got a lookup table with like if you have basically any eventuality enough eventualities programmed in, you can basically just use a lookup table, right? Mm. You could just conceivably, obviously data uh sort of data like space for data permitting memory space mm. permitting yeah you could conceivably do that right mm. that is kind of that is kind of the point here that it is even even if a machine were to pass the turing test that would uh and trick and fool a human into believing that it was a it, it you know had an understanding of what it was saying that it was an intelligence that doesn't mean that it necessarily is intelligent right because it doesn't... Or uh, uh, let alone sentient. Yeah. Sentient, yeah, yeah. Because this is the thing. And when it comes to Sophia, does Sophia understand what she's saying? Or is she just blurting out responses that <laughs> um, get her the right answer? It's, we've, spoken about, we've spoken about artificial intelligence a lot before, you know? It's like you, you sort of train an artificial intelligence to know what a cat is. That AI does not know what a cat is. It just knows that it, it is a good thing to point out things that seem like cats. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it does not understand the concept of a cat yeah. at all. Just be, you know, because an because an artificial intelligence can say pick out a a dog's face in a photograph, mm -hmm. it does not know what a dog is. It yeah. has no idea. It knows what it they look doesn't like. Doesn't have an understanding of that concept. It can just do this thing really well, right? Yeah. Yeah. In the same yeah. sense that if you were in a room, um, just looking up Chinese characters and putting out the the appropriate responses, you still wouldn't be able to understand Chinese. Yeah. That's the kind of the idea behind that there. Um, and so, yeah, this is the, this is the thing. Sophia, the robot, I think is interesting. Definitely interesting. Um, it's very cool. The sort of facial expressions, um, the, her sort of learning. I don't know how it's difficult to tell how much she actually learns because, you know, they put up fake interviews essentially that are scripted. So it is hard to say how advanced and how interesting Sophia actually is. But I think the concept of using Sophia as a platform to get people used to artificial intelligence and sort of creating a model or a framework for the way that robots and artificial, like artificially intelligent um, sort of beings interact with humanity. I think that's fairly interesting. I just don't think it's good to deceive people in the way that they've done because people don't know, you know? Yeah. Yes. And I think also it's it's and it, it, it's, it's sad as well. It's, I think the media potentially could have done a better job at, um, being very honest about this, and, and, and in some 
places it seems like they have because mm. you have access to the fact that they they were asking these questions wanting to ask these questions and they weren't allowed to um but you know it, it sort of encourages the sad thing is, is it encourages a sort of conspiratorial mindset whereby you have to sort of break down what you're experiencing and not trusted at face value from an organization you're supposed to be able to trust at face value like mm. the ideal of of the media is that you they are reporting honestly you can trust what you see and obviously we know that's not necessarily true but it's an ideal right and so it's a pretty sad thing that, that we I mean, obviously Corey has looked at this um information looked at an interview and gone okay well what other things could be true that would also make sense to explain the thing i'm experiencing you see a robot talk, having a conversation with a reporter it looks like that robot's having a conversation with a reporter so i now have to go oh well maybe the maybe the answer the questions were pr submitted ahead of time and maybe the creators scripted it and maybe and it's like well Bloody hell, now I can't trust anything. That's rubbish. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> can't I trust the things I'm meant to be able to trust. I think this is a problem when it comes to science communication in the media uh, with those kinds of publications because in a lot of cases, they have people that don't necessarily know much at all or yeah. anything about what they're reporting on, which can, ah, can make a lot of issues, really yeah. a lot of issues. Um, but obviously, you know, it, it doesn't take a lot for a reporter, a reporter to be diligent with this. Um, but again, it is very easy. Like if you say to Jimmy Fallon, Hey man, do you want to, do you want to, this, this sexy lady robot to, uh, come up and, and chat on your show? <laughs> Why would he say no? Yeah. That, that well, that's, yeah. That's the thing is you're saying it's a problem with, with, um, scientific reporting. It's also a problem with the media is the media is yeah. only ever incentivized other than say, for example, the BBC who don't have a funding model that relies on clicks. The majority of the media is incentivized to get clicks. It's not incentivized to tell you the truth. The truth and, is a, a happy accident compared to getting clicks. And to be fair, the truth is not going to get clicks until Sophia's big enough that it's interesting that she's alive. Yes. You know? yeah. So Absolutely. in order to get the truth, in, to, or in order for the truth to be clickable and to be um, a viable business model for some places like CNBC, um, Sophia needs to be famous and lied about first, which is just ridiculous, honestly. <laughs> like, it's it's utterly disgusting the way that uh, our world works, essentially. But yeah, that is the episode. That is... <laughs> that is Sophia the robot. What do you guys think? What do you think about her? Well, I'm thoroughly disappointed, Corey. She's a big old fakie. <laughs> big old fakie. But yeah. you can see her brain whirring. That's pretty cool, isn't it? Oh, you can see That's her true. brain whirring. Yeah. And when she takes off her top, she's all wiry. She got wires inside. <laughs> oh, is she? Yeah. I did not need to know that. Oh. Thank you very much. Well, I didn't look. <laughs> I didn't, it's not like I googled up. Sophia topless. I just. Well, how do saw, you know then? I just saw pictures of her. You know, she's had a topless. few. Yeah. She got Fair into enough. sex work. Being a famous robot was not profitable. <laughs> Subscribe enough. to her OnlyFans, did you? <laughs> look at my wires. <laughs> no, she just has a racy Twitter account, Jamp. That's where I get all my oh, content. Oh, it's a free, a free version. Before we finish, uh, I think it's time for the quick fire quiz. Dun, Hell dun, yeah. Dun, dun. Robot edition. So the rules... <laughs> Fuck. Robot edition. <laughs> Robot edition. So the rules are the same as every single quick fire quiz that we have ever done. I will say them now. I will ask one question between the two of you. You need to answer the question after I finished asking it. The first person to buzz in with the correct answer wins. What do they win, Jamp? Absolutely nothing. Gosh darn right. Yeah. Yeah, gosh darn right. That's what you'll win. So, first off, what are your buzzers? Luke, what's your buzzer? Me. Very good. Jamp, what's your buzzer? Exterminate. <laughs> Interestingly, I saw an article where people, someone said that Sophia would not be as loved if she was put in a Dalek body, which <laughs> bothers not, me no. because it's... Because it's perpetuating the myth that Daleks are robots. They're not robots. They're little squid creatures in, in big metal bodies. Watch it's Doctor true. Who, you losers. No. <laughs> Organic robot. Anyway, fantastic <laughs> buzzer. My question for you is, are you both ready? Yeah. Well done, you win. No, that wasn't the question. The question is, can you name one of Sophia's siblings? Oh. oh. Luke. Einstein. You know what? I'll give it to you. Is that the you name? Darn right. Yeah, it's Albert Einstein. Yeah, but not actual yeah. Albert Einstein. 
No, no, that was his name, though. That was the name. Honestly, did you name any of the other siblings? I can't remember. Exterminate. I didn't Asimo. name any of the. I no, was, that, that's not a sibling. No, that's, that's one racist. I mentioned. Jam. That's your, no. your, your robo by, racist, Jam. It's made by Honda. <laughs> Honda? <laughs> yeah. I said Fujitsu and uh, Fujitsu. a few others, but no, it Hitachi. was Honda. Well, Corey's camera has died, but thank you for watching. You can find all the references for this episode in the description. So subscribe for new videos every Sunday. And why not leave us a nice wee review? You can find fi follow us on, you can find us on uh, patreon.com forward slash sorry guys. <laughs> Corey, send me the outro. Okay, how about this? 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 Okay. This will be fun. I will say it. Look, you just flap your mouth. Okay. Before oh, we go, we'd like oh. to thank all of our patrons with a very special thank you to executive producer Ashley Muller and Finn TZ. And also, thank you for watching. You can find the full references for this episode in the description. Subscribe for new episodes every Sunday and why not leave us a nice wee comment? You can support the pod at patreon.com forward slash SciGuys or find and contact us at SciGuysPod on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram and at SciGuys on TikTok too. Or you can send us an email at SciGuysPod at gmail.com. That's SciGuysPod That's at gmail.com. Sir guys pod at gmail.com you can follow me at not Corey everywhere you can follow me at jamkin everywhere and you can follow me at luke cutforth everywhere goodbye 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 <laughs> <laughs>